Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Four days ago, I uploaded my review video for the FV4211. In that video, I said that I was hopeful that the FV was a sneak peek into what was to come with the main British Cold War line. Now that the Cold War line is here, and I have played all of the top, top tier tanks for the line in each era, I have to say that Wargaming have delivered very well on this one. To me, the Cold War British line feels balanced, but also very, very fun to play. And after an enormous 1.245 million XP grind, you'll be rewarded with this tank. This is the British heavy tank, the Challenger 2. In my typical fashion, I'm not going to spew every Challenger 2 tank statistic from the game because I don't think that does anybody any good. It's really what these, in my opinion, what these reviews are about is exactly what the tank feels like to play. So, when you first unlock the Challenger 2, it should be noted that your grind at this point in, the, in this line, your grind is not over. You have another 225,000 XP to go before this tank achieves elite status. That's a lot of XP, but I can say this for certain. It is not a painful grind. The game you're seeing in the background here is the very first game I ever played in the Challenger 2. It's a good tank. Let's start with its armour. The turret front has 534mm of spaced armour angled at 50 degrees. On top of that, the upper glacis is at an incredibly shallow angle with 355mm of spaced armour as well. Add to this the 10 degrees of gun depression, and yep, you've probably guessed it, the Challenger 2 is pretty much a hull down specialist which does actually fit the trend of British heavies in this game. Conqueror, Super Conqueror, uh, not the Chieftain though, so scratch the Chieftain from that list. <laughs> Even though it's a heavy, it's more like a medium heavy, but anyway. What I have noticed, and one thing I like about the Challenger 2, is it's very, very responsive when reversing. You can peak a ridge, and as soon as you, as soon as you fired, you can be back down behind cover incredibly quickly. Very, very quickly. And this, to me, feels like it's one of its major strengths. This also comes in handy when you find yourself in a tight situation and you basically need to fall back or retreat. Being able to reverse out of danger is always quicker and easier than spinning the entire vehicle round and well, driving away forwards. The gun on the Challenger 2 is also very, very nice. With a fully skilled crew and all the equipment that boosts gun performance, such as uh, advanced loader, gun laying, advanced gun laying drive, and gun stabilizer, which are the three uh, bits of equipment I use, as well as tar target info, you can get the reload down to 6.1 seconds. With, with the damage per shot, that gives the Challenger 2 a DPM of 5,445. To put that into perspective, the M1A2 Abrams has a DPM of 4,398. And the T-72BU has a DPM of 4,175. Those figures are all based on the fully unlocked, fully upgraded guns for each vehicle, respectively. The Challenger 2 is way ahead of the competition. Way ahead of the competition as far as gun handling goes and gun performance. Now, at this point, you could be forgiven for thinking that it's all sunshine and rainbows when it comes to playing this tank. There are downsides though. 
it is the slowest of all the top tier heavies. Admittedly, yes, it's only one kilometer an hour slower than the T-72BU, but it does still come in last place. It also feels quite sluggish when it's maneuvering. Uh, I don't have it fully unlocked. Obviously, I don't have the engine upgrade or track upgrade. I can't remember what other upgrades there are. I'm basically... Well, no, I'm actually, I am playing it stock. This is my first game. I'm playing it stock. So it may improve, but yeah, it, it still feels sluggish, in my opinion. But the biggest and most glaring weakness of this tank is the lower glacis only has 69 millimeters of armor. That is a glaring issue. That's a massive, massive weakness of this tank. This line has only been available on the public server for about just a little over 12 hours as of me recording this video. So it's not a well-known weakness, but it will be. Give it time and this tank will be will be known for having that weakness and it's a big weakness in my opinion. It has to be played hull down. It has to be played with armor, the turret armor in mind. For World War II folks that want a reference point for this tank really and how it feels to play, it's basically a faster and more maneuverable Super Conqueror. If you can handle the hull down playstyle, then the Challenger 2 is definitely for you. Like I said before, I've not fully unlocked everything, I haven't got all the upgrades, but right now I can't see this tank competing with the T-72s when it comes to turning fights. It's just not that's not what this it's not what the Challenger 2 is meant to be doing. Not meant to be getting into turning fights. It can, however, match the T-72 in a gunfight. As I said in my FV review, the average T-72 driver, hmm, generalization here, T-72 drivers can be a little overconfident. <laughs> the standard rounds in the uh, Challenger 2 will do the job fine against any enemy target, but if you want that little extra, you can load the L27A1 gold rounds and you can unleash all 730 millimeters of penetration on enemy, any enemy target. That's a lot. That's a lot of penetration that basically no amount of armor in the game can protect you from. It's insane amount of, of uh, penetration. Combine that with the armor and DPM and there's very little that will stand a chance against the, the Challenger 2. I like the Challenger 2 and the tanks that precede it aren't half bad either. Personally, if you've never played Cold War, but you're interested in playing it and wanting don't know what line to start with, I would actually recommend the British line over the other two. The British line has got character, and the line culminates in a quality top tier heavy tank, the Challenger 2. It just has to be played right, the weaknesses have to be covered. But that's doable, and any World War 2 player will know that because you've probably played the Conqueror and the Super Conqueror and those two tanks have very very good reputations and the Challenger 2 follows in those footsteps. Alright that's about all I have for this one. If you've enjoyed this video please leave it a like if not a dislike. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and as always I hope you're all still keeping safe and I will see you out there.